I've been sat in this corner for the last 20 years. Um, I wish we could all change around actually, but, but there's a, Ian's drums are now inside a fixed booth, which means that in the past, whenever, whenever we got bored, we could all swap corners, you know, but this has been my corner for forever, really. Um, behind me, I've got the, um, this is from the This Strange Engine tour. Um, the, and there's a bit of Holidays in Eden over there. Um, the, the stage drapes, um, but it's really there to, to absorb some of the, the noise. So it's because there's a solid wall behind there. Um, but yeah, I've got, um, as most people probably know, I've, my, my rig is now sort of computer based. I use an Apple and a, a Mac mini at the moment. Um, and um, a program called Mainstage, which basically allows you to have virtual software instruments in a virtual rack that you can call up the different sounds and assign them to different keyboards. So this bottom keyboard is a Roland RD2000, which is like a weighted piano keyboard, weighted as in the keys feel like a real piano, as opposed to this, which is just like plastic keys with no um, sensitivity in the same way. Um, but this is an old keyboard actually, the Korg Karma, which I still have it because it's got a few sounds that are pretty essential to this, the sound of some of our songs, such as bits of, but mainly from the Marbles album actually, um, the Neverland, big sounds in Neverland and Invisible Man, there's a few sounds from there, um, and Ocean Cloud. But anyway, I've, I've sort of, I'm sort of not really stuck with it, but I've, I've kept it because because of those sounds and they're really hard to reproduce any other way. Um, but this is just a control. Well, actually this does make sounds of its own, but this is just a control. It doesn't make any sound. It just plays the sound from the keyboard. And this is an organ, uh, mainly with the old fashioned draw bars that you would find on a Hammond organ. Um, and that's pretty much it. So four keyboards. I sometimes have a, the mini, old, old mini Moog set up there, but it's at home at the moment. Um, and in a rack, there's an, another keyboard module and a thing called a Joko, which is basically a hard disk player, a 24 track hard disk player that we play back clicks for the band to play to. So every, well, practically every member of the band has got their own clicks. So for example, Ian will hear a click for him to count in and play along to, to make sure we're at the right tempo. Um, but if Ian's not playing, we have a click playing so that we can play in time when there's no drums. And then Steve H hates the clicks. So he only has a click when it's absolutely essential. So he's got his own click, which is quite quiet and minimal, um, but we're only where he really needs it. Otherwise he just relies on hearing what we're playing. Um, but, as, but there's also a bit of, I call it cheating, um, a bit of stuff like samples, sound effects, drum loops, things that um, in the past, we've, we've either not used or not had, or I've triggered from keys on the keyboard, usually at the dusty end at the top or bottom, um, where I'd, you know, I'd be playing and then I'd just reach and hit a key to start something playing, or down here. And then when the, round about the Brave album, it all got a bit too much. There were so many things that needed triggering that I then got Pete to, to help out by triggering stuff on these pedals, because he's got a set of pedals which are basically like a keyboard. Um, which are connected to me, um, so he could then trigger stuff. But a lot of it now we put in the player, which means that it's all synchronized with the clicks. So as long as we start in the right place and don't get out of time with the clicks or miss a section or do something silly, um, all these little samples and little noises and bits and pieces all happen at the same time. There's also a bit of help with some of the backing vocals as well, um, which is, Pointless me denying it, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it just it's it's um, it's a compromise between trying to play everything live, but you want it to sound like the record, but you want to have the freedom to be able to do, you know, to do a live performance. So I think we get we strike the right balance. Sometimes we'll have a click to start with, and the click will stop, and we can just go off and do what we want. Everybody's got one of these, um, which is basically your own personal mixer. Um, you select which member of the band or which instrument you want to hear and then you can turn it up or down here. So this is the bass drum, the drum kit, bass guitar, Steve's JC120 is 4x12, H's guitars and keys, my keys, the samples, the loops, 
uh, Pete's vocals and pedal, my vocal, H's vocal, the band click, Ian's click, it's all here. Everybody can adjust the levels that they want for each, each of those things. The only endorsement I have, and this wasn't, this wasn't a, um, an intentional endorsement, is um, a company that make um, the, the digital piano. It's like a, a, the, it's like a um, rather than a sample piano, um, it's like physical modeling as they call it, so the computer creates the sound of the piano. So there's no samples. Um, it's by a company called ModArt and it's called Pianotech. And round about, the, I'm on version seven now, but round about version four, because I'd heard it when it was like version two and it was like, didn't really sound that real. And then by the time they got to about version four or five, it was actually sounded really realistic. And I'm like, so I bought it and then I wrote to them and said how, how, how enjoyable it was to play it because it really feels good, you know. And they wrote back and said, yeah, you can have anything you want. <laughs> so I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, they were, yeah, they were really nice. And uh, so they keep me up to date with the latest version, which is good. And they've got all these different, mo you know, different models of everything from Bosendorf, as a Steinway, Beckstein, whatever, all the different pianos that they basically modeled using, you know, recording and then, and then using the computer to, it's like a, I suppose it's like, um, like a virtual version of it, but they use, I don't know how they do it, but they using, you know, basic calculations to work out things like string length and all that sort of stuff. And which means that you can make these incredibly um, unreal pianos like string, you know, a, a piano with a 10 meter long string or something like that, you know, they just alter the parameters, you know. Because I'm in charge of the, the machines that, that do the clicks and everything, everybody sort of looks to me to make sure that everything, you know, if things start to go a bit wobbly, it's usually down to me to sort it out. And so, um, and also, for example, everything that Pete plays on those pedals, I set up for him. So if he's playing a bass pedal sound, it's up to me to make sure he's got it when he needs it. Um, and, um, you know, there's also the, the metronome. We have these flashing light metronomes as well. So if there's not a click plane, Ian will have a, like a flashing light in, flashes in time so that he can play to that. Um, again, I have to make sure that that's all happening. Um, so there's, there's quite a lot of preparation before a tour that, I, that is down to me really to sort out. So, and sometimes, yeah, it does feel like pressing buttons and, and triggering things and stuff. It is not really playing. It's more of a technician job, really. Um, and if you get too involved, or if I get too involved in just enjoying the music or, or listening to H singing and listening to the lyrics or whatever, um, it's enough of a distraction that sometimes you, you miss things and it's like, oh, damn. <laughs> um, so you've got, you've got to sort of stay really aware of what's going on rather than just getting lost in the music, you know. So I pre-program everything um, before we actually go out on the road so that I know, um, I can't see anything, we didn't do any gigs in 2020, that's why. Um, 2019, let's go find us Lisbon, here we go, this is, this is one of the um, the, uh, the weekend nights, but I'm loading up Lisbon from night one. Um, but yeah, so it's not possible to have every single song that we've ever played ready to go, just because it would just take up too much memory. So I have a, a selection of songs, that songs we're going to play, but also maybe a few others that, and I put them in order. So, um, so when I step on a pedal, it moves on to the next song or the next part of a song, because quite often the songs will have different sections that I've got different sounds for. So when I, select a different patch, let's say it's part one of a song, um, there'll be a set of sounds on these keyboards and I can have, so if I'm playing here, 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 I can, I can quickly switch between them. But then that's only four, four different selections or maybe I could split the keyboards and have different sounds at the top and bottom, whatever. But um, in the old days, if you wanted to, you know, to have a, a, a big selection of, of um, sounds, you needed more keyboards. Whereas now I just hit the pedal to move on to the next sound um, loading up sounds on, on an old emulator, you just have to put a floppy disk in a drive and load it. And whilst that was loading, you could play somewhere else and then it, you know, you'd get it ready beforehand. So for example, the song Sunset Town would have a patch at the beginning, which will get ready so that when I hit the next patch, 
it will start playing the clicks to count everybody in or, or that little the, or the little intro in that one actually that's all on in the box um, and then the point where the whole band comes in and then I've got a different patch for the next section you can s and here you'll s there's like a mixing desk where you can see all the the different things that I've got loaded up the songs are all listed here so this is like the first song say Sunset Town and this is the first patch and then I move on here to start the clicks and it selects all the different instruments that I'm going to be playing here so for example um, if I select one of them the piano piano tech um, that's the that's the piano module there. This is the patch change pedal, so when I press that, every press of that moves it forward a patch. That's just the um, damper pedal for the piano. And this one does the, the um, Leslie speed up and slow down, that's for, for the organ. It makes it a lot easier selecting the sounds when you're on stage because you can do all the preparation beforehand. Whereas back in the old days, trying to remember where a sound was, what patch it was on, and having to go, oh yeah, I, I, yeah, you know, I'd have lists of, of the songs and the patches I had to select and by pressing buttons and stuff like that. So, or with the old mini mode, you had to tune it manually during the show, and you know, uh, so there was a different set of challenges. I've got something similar to this actually. This I've got an RD800, um, which is pretty much the same as this, um, and. I take these home from time to time. Um, I've got a few other bits and pieces. But again, it's just another, another computer. It's the setup in terms of what sounds there are, it's exactly the same. I've got all the same software. Um, and I use Logic, which is again another Apple piece of software for recording. Um, and the way that works is it, if I'm working at home recording, Mike will send me um, like a, a, a selection of backing tracks, if you like, to record two, and then I send him what I've done, and he adds it into the song here. So, as long as it's all played in time with what he's got, when he drops it into his song, it all it all fits. Yeah, I've I've been working that way for a number of albums now. Actually, I can't remember when I first started doing it, but um, but it suits me because it means I can I, I can. Have time to experiment with parts and sounds and when you're in the studio I mean the, the, the plus side of working here with Mike is that you get instant feedback and 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 you know he can say oh yeah that's that's a really good thing or or can you try this or that working at home on your own it's it's not as instant um, but it, it feels less pressure because you're not you haven't got somebody waiting while you're trying to frantically get a particular sound that you're after or whatever um, but um, but then I'll send him stuff, and he, he quite often will ask me to do it again, or, <laughs> or can you change that sound, or that part's a bit busy, or whatever, you know. Um, and then, of course, there's the rest of the band as well, so we, we, we give each other feedback on stuff. You have to be quite, quite diplomatic, though, you know. Because it's, it's hard, you know, you're working away for... A, sometimes I might spend a whole day just on one little part, and I'll be really happy with it, and somebody will say, oh, I don't really like that. And it's... <laughs> Thanks for watching Marillion's official YouTube channel. Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification thingamajig so you're the first to know when we upload new content.